<laughs> All right. Hi, another everybody. another Tim and Sarah era podcast. We're oh, yes. we're done. Oh, okay. This is I'm I'm worried about this this podcast. Thankfully, we're not live, so we can go back and edit anything we need to. Hopefully, we won't have to. No, nah, I think we'll be I don't want to do all that. How's stuff. my hair, everybody? I think it's nice. Comment. It's comment a little, it's a little like it's kind of on one side. Yeah. yeah that happens. Mine is just flat today. I wore a hat, so I just got good old hat hair. I almost shaved my beard this morning. Mm. I had that like I don't know what it is. Every once you just get this crate like that's me getting crazy. It's like, you know what I'm gonna do? No. It's a bad yeah. idea. I woke up at three AM for no reason. To pray. Jesus called you out to it, pray. That's actually what I told you to this morning. Because usually my son wakes up at that time. He didn't, but I, I when I woke up it was weird because I was all like uh, my inner clock is a set to Carl's time, but it was weird. <laughs> it wasn't. It, it was like I just very much. So I had a great, great prayer time this morning. So, so speaking of prayer time, mm -hmm. let's talk about the cover. Yes, um, it's Saint Jude, and it's by an actual artist that Father Ross and I met in California this year um, at the RE Congress. Uh, her name is Jen Norton, and she does all this wonderful art that we've used actually for our sacraments this year mm -hmm. too. Um, and you can see this art piece, Saint Jude. Yep. Um, over in our church and St. Jude's got some wild and crazy things coming out of his head. It's, he does. It's in the back. So if you go yep. over, over, uh, Lent, we had Our Lady Endure of Knots and a whole display in the, uh, if you walk into the church uh, to the right, uh, and that's where St. Jude is displayed prominently, um, for God, all things are possible is displayed. And, uh, what was the artist's name again? Jen Norton. Jen Norton. So shout out to her. Um, yeah. we, she, I love this picture of St. Jude, the, mm -hmm. the colors the it just, it's, it's awesome. So, um, feel free to take a look at that. Uh, and actually the, our, um, upcoming new bulletin company that we're going to work with uses a lot of her art oh, okay. on diocesan's yes. website. So yeah. We're excited to work with them as well. Yeah. So shout out to to Jen and diocesan and everyone we're going to work with. We're excited. It's going to be the 13th Sunday in ordinary time. Um, lots of things developing just this morning. We had a bunch of people asking for new, a new kind of Bible study. So it's just, there's all kinds of cool things that are going to be coming, coming down the pipe. But for now, um, also a new bulletin, I think next week. Yeah. Yeah. So like this week we have this one, but then no, two weeks of the 12th and 13th would be the first one with all that stuff in it because it'd be after the ninth. Oh, okay. Well then I have to make one more of these, but anyway, okay. Two weeks. We're going to have a whole new bulletin. Um, it's going to be awesome. So unless I got that wrong too, father, whatever, Ross, please, you know, call it's, and it's tell fine. me I'm wrong. So. You can just, you know what? They'll find out <laughs> next week on the podcast. Cause we'll either have something or one of these, whatever. Yes, yes, we'll Anywho. Um, so anything on this, uh, intentions page that's important. I just skipped it. I'm a horrible person. I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever. Pray for people. Cool. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't think there's much of anything. I know the um, uh, the sanctuary lamp is burning in honor of Father Luke Dagger. Yes. Um, he has moved in. He has been doing daily mass for a couple of days with Father Ross dealing with some, you know, family stuff still mm -hmm. here. And um, he's been a wonderful asset. He's also been at Quivadas Days up at the diocese. Yes. So he's a busy little bee here already in his... I just love what I, my, I think my favorite thing about him uh, so far is his uh, attention to um, I don't know how to say this. It's like it's almost like hospitality because he hasn't been here. I mean, he's he's woken up. He's done mass. He's left like he, he's he's been very busy. Oh, he checks in and says goodbye. That's what I'm saying. Like he, he just day. comes yeah. into the office and is like, hey, guys, how are you? Have a great day. And I'm yeah. like, he, he doesn't have to do that. You know, right? which like he really doesn't. <laughs> he could just leave, mm -hmm. um, but instead he's he's been taking the time to to you know check in. You know, even if he's not going to have a conversation, just to say good morning, and I think that's pretty cool. You know, so yeah. I've 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 enjoyed just that learning a little bit about him that way, and because you can tell a lot about people from just those little exchanges. So uh, he's awesome. We're so excited that he is here. Uh, it's going to be really neat. So, and you, you liked his homily. You said you heard his homily last, last night. night yeah, yeah. Daily mass, daily mass nice. last night. So, um, I have yet to hear him preach. I'm excited. It's going to be cool. So, so actually, you know what? On Saturday, July 6th, you didn't put, um, cause it's part of the mass, you know, weekend in every way, mm -hmm. but do you know, do you know what Satan is? Because I'm pretty sure I used during the children's bulletin. Oh also. yeah. Well, I, between us, just us, it's just us here. Just us. She was in there. Yeah. And then she got edited out. 
<laughs> so not by me. <laughs> and so no not saying who did that with all respect and and love in the world, but yeah, she was there. She was. But she's not there anymore. Uh but it is the memorial just in the daily mass. That's why it's not because the Saturday intention is for the 415 for the for the Sabbath, for the weekend masses. So it, it was confusing, so that's why it got edited. It's for good reason. It's not that we don't like her, but St. Maria Goretti. Yes. She is one of my favorite saints, and her oh, story yeah. is really painful. Uh, it's very, it's dark, um, but it's beautiful. I yeah. mean, it, it has the most beautiful, it's, it's one of the most amazing stories of forgiveness, honestly, second only to Jesus on the cross. Like it's it's fantastic. So it is definitely a uh, a a, a PG thirteen story. Sure. You know this so we is have the not edited yeah. the edited children friendly yes, version in, in the, the children's, children's bulletin. bulletin. Go read that one if your kids want to know more. Parents, I highly suggest that you read it in advance um, to then give a filtered version to your children because it's very uh, her story was very violent and and horrible, but. Again, beautiful redemption that came out of it, but it's still pretty pretty graphic. So uh, that disclaimer needs to be said. Um, yeah, uh, this weekend as well, we have more. Uh, we have another story of a little girl. Um, Jairus, the synagogue official's daughter, mm -hmm. uh, is sick and dying. And he comes to Jesus and asks uh, him to come and heal her. So Jesus is on the way. And then a, a woman uh, who is suffering, um, she reaches out and touches Jesus' cloak and is like, if I could only touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. Correct. So she does this in great faith and she's and she's healed. And what I love the line, it says, it says Jesus, knowing that power had gone out of him. <laughs> like, you know, like that feeling where it's like, Ugh, you know, like you just get like the chills or something. I don't know what that must have been like for Jesus. But it says, knowing this, he's like, who touched me? And then he finds out it's the woman while he's talking to her. A beautiful conversation, though we find out that the daughter has passed away. And this is one of my favorite Jesus moments in the whole Bible because it's and not just because of Jesus, but because of Jairus, because they were on the way. We don't know how close they were to his house. Like, what if he was just up the street and then and now Jesus stops to talk to this woman only to find out that his daughter, like Jairus finds out his daughter passed away. And if they had maybe kept going, if they hadn't slowed down, maybe they would have got there in time. And Jesus looks at Jairus and he says, don't be afraid, just have faith. Yeah. So I would encourage everybody, uh, blow that up. You know, uh, write it on a piece of paper, put it on your bathroom mirror, put it on your door frame, your bedroom door, n in your Bible as a bookmark, whatever. Just that verse. Don't be afraid. Just have faith. And I didn't know this. I mean, I've heard it before, but it was never in my memory until I was looking it up. That, But do not be afraid is in the Bible 365 times. Yes, it is. I've heard that. And it's kind of like, eh, that might be, there might be a reason for that. So don't be afraid. Just have faith. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. It's um, actually, so what's really funny is mm -hmm. the, the story of... Um, the woman reaching out to Jesus to yeah. touch her, the hem of her thing of her, his cloak and Jesus healing the, the young girl and, you know, telling her to, to, you know, walk again are both pictures that we used in the children's bulletin. One mm -hmm. is the cover. One is on the inside with the story. Um, and then it's on the back. I used a maze. So to get from one place to the other, that's awesome. So, um, I use both stories in the children's bulletin so you can um, take it that way. And on the front of the bulletin cover with the, the hemorrhaging lady who, you know, was looking for healing. It says, uh, your faith is, um, your faith, your is faith is either made. It might be made you well, or it's done. It's been done for you yeah. according to your faith, so. which is interesting. Cause Jesus is all, he, he goes, it, it's never about so much what Jesus is doing for you as much as the witness of your faith in what Jesus can do, mm -hmm. you know, whether he does it or not. And what I think is neat, too, is when they get to Jairus' house, everybody's in mourning. Um, I believe they call it Shiva, sit Shiva. Yeah. Like you're sitting, so. sitting Shiva. I'd have to talk when, to my Jewish friends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when when you're, um, or we're going to, you know, when, when the, basically the funeral. And there's wailing and, and sadness. And Jesus says, what are you doing? The child is not dead. She's only asleep. And everyone starts to ridicule him. What I think is neat, too, is even in that moment, you know, it says Jesus put them out. Like he kicks him out. But this is Jairus' house. And the people that come to the funeral like that, especially that soon, like these are Jairus's close friends and family that would have shown up sure. to mourn. This mm -hmm. is grandma and 
aunt so-and-so, you know, and this guy, this random rabbi is saying, get out. And they would all look at Jairus and be like, that what what do you what is happening? And Jairus is like, listen to what he says. Get out. Like, can you imagine having the faith, you know, in that moment to just not give up and be like, okay, Jesus, I will trust in you. It's a beautiful moment. So so really get into the gospel this weekend. I'm excited. Like, knowing like even like Father Ross, like he was not at he couldn't be at Bible study today. So uh, we had a great discussion about it. But I'm so excited to hear his his and you know homily on this story. So it it's going to be going to get to because he'll. Oh, he'll be gone. He'll be gone. Father gone. Joe, excuse me. Father Did I say Father Ross? Yeah. I meant to say Father, Father Joe. Father Joe this weekend. Father yes. Joe and Father Luke. Sh- no, Father Luke will be gone Father, too. Father, Father Shane. Shane. Yeah. Okay. Or whoever has masses this Some weekend. Some priest. <laughs> Some in priest. investment. <laughs> it will be green, I think, or is it, it better be Still green? Still green, yeah. Yeah, it'll be green. There'll be a green dude who will preach a good message. Yes. That's all I got. I told you. <laughs> we told you at the beginning. We're, this is. It'll be interesting. It's happening. All right. Um, so, it's also going to be 4th of July. Yeah. Uh, next Thursday, uh, important note. Um, we won't be here. We will not be here. The All office of will us. be closed. And, and some people will be celebrating birthdays. Father Ross will be celebrating his birthday overseas. Overseas. Yes. Again. So yes. there's that. And uh, somebody else will just be at home with his children and his wife. That is Tim. It's also his birthday on the 4th of July. Absolutely. It's a beautiful thing here. It, it really is. Um, we, I want to double check too with the Knights. Sure. I'm not sure. I heard somewhere. They're can- what meeting were they canceling for the summer? Is it Ooh. July or August? It was still on the calendar when I made this yes. so we'll have to look so we'll have to look and we'll put it in the announcements before mass to let people know absolutely but um just an fyi yes. not 100 percent sure if the night's meeting mm-hmm. is happening on the third we will check with so our night. if you are a knight and you see this and there isn't a meeting tell your fellow knights and let us know as well so yeah. thank you um there is a whole bunch of vacation bible schools happening in the city of <laughs> It's four. It's, it went up one more from... <laughs> Hold on. Um, I've Diana paused the is- show. <laughs> Diana is making faces at us through the glass, which is hilarious because she's always like, people touch the glass. She's touching the glass <laughs> as we speak. But she also cleans the glass. So shout out to Diana. Literally, she's right there looking at us. And uh, she's she's wonderful. So there's our weekly Diana moment Diana. brought to you by <laughs> Vacation Bible School. There you go. Vacation Bible School across the city of Erie. Take yes. it away, Sarah. So um, we mentioned uh, this past week that there would be three. There are actually four in-person Vacation Bible Schools um, at some of our sister churches. And we also will be using um, one of the Vacation Bible Schools, putting it in um, the four weeks of July into mm-hmm. the Children's Bulletin along with some of our other favorite stuff. So that way we don't, you know, take away from what we are doing and just adding a little bit more. If there's um, stuff that goes with it, um, you'll be able to, you'll, it'll be attached or in the bulletin. And I, if Father Ross said, are you having a space in the back of church for vacation Bible school? I don't remember actually saying those words, but no, there might be some type of display or something that we set up or maybe something that we're going to start to build here at the church mm-hmm. for children, yes. um, a space for them. Mm-hmm. Um, we've talked about it a couple times yeah. in the meeting, so we're looking forward to we, something that fun way. We, we want to make uh, the Sunday experience, as we've been calling it, the Sunday experience at St. Jude's. Obviously, it's centered around the Mass. Um, but we just want to find more ways to draw people into into that that experience of the mass and the community that goes with it. Because what's kind of interesting, I think, is a lot of churches, especially Catholic, well, not especially Catholic churches, because we're talking about the mass. But it's almost like the mass is sort of forgotten about when you think about a church. Sure. It's like it's well, like it's oh, the stuff everyone does mass, right? So then it's like what sets you apart from other Catholic parishes because like what programs are you off, whatever, which is good. It's good to offer those things and to do those things. But one of the things we really want to do is, um, especially in this time of Eucharistic revival, um, to really sort of get people to realize again, that the mass is the most important thing that we do. Like it, it, it's everything that we do. Everything else that we do is supposed to help draw us more into the mass so that's what we're really focusing on so it's really important that we do that for our children not just adults and young adults and and older youth so uh, pay attention for those kinds of things and again we've had a lot of new people coming in so just to reiterate father excuse me father ross's pastoral stance on kids in church if they if a church is silent it should close that is father ross's stance if 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 kids aren't making noise and, and showing us that we're alive. 
Oh, and speaking of That's alive it. children, she was very, very vocal this weekend. Um, welcome to Rebel Rose. Oh. She was adorable. <laughs> Rebel. She um, very opinionated little girl. Um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, just full of personality and energy. We loved it. I, uh, I she got felt baptized. Rebel's uh, feelings during communion because mass went a little bit long because father was explaining different things sure. that are coming. There's a lot of details and, and different things. We're trying to be as transparent as possible. And uh, Rebel walked out of her pew and just laid down in the aisle (laughs) and just like just had her hand just planked, just laid there face in the ground, just went. And I was like, girl, (laughs) we feel that I feel that (laughs) it was awesome. So now we're so happy to to have her in our Catholic faith to be baptized. And then the family celebrated in the founder's room Mm -hmm. afterwards. Um, So it was super nice. And they were just a great they were a great group of people because they were supposed to be downstairs. But there was an issue downstairs. So they had to move everything upstairs. Not one complaint. I mean, no. my favorite thing was all the little girls like wanted one of the, those those little bead red rosaries we had in the, had in the front for people to take. They all were like, "Can we take one?" Yes. And all their parents were like, "No." And I'm standing there like, "Go for it." And they all looked at me like, "Really?" And I was like, "Hey." Yes. So then have I got to sh- then I got to show them how to pray it. That was the cutest thing. Well, like, then they okay. tried to play hide and go seek. Yeah, they wanted was, to come into the it church. Was so it was much beautiful. Fun. <laughs> we loved it. Was very it. beautiful. Um. So next week. Thursday hangout will not be happening because we, like we said, the office will be closed for the 4th of July. So yeah. to it's honor father Ross's stuff, birthday know. yeah, um, <laughs> and mine, whatever. I don't like talk. It's weird to say it for yourself. I yeah, know my birthday. That's okay. Um, I, I bought a mask for myself on, <laughs> on my birthday. So <laughs> All right. Anyway, <laughs> moving whatever, on. Whatever you'll works. see that next. You'll see that in in August. <laughs> Should, uh, we'll be in the bowl too from Sarah in August. for herself. No, it's <laughs> hey, you can do that. There's nothing. There is nothing wrong with that. So this is our first um our first exciting moment here to draw attention to. Uh, Father Ross put in a parish planning update, um, and it there is uh, the update in English and Spanish great we're very excited about that because that it's a small taste of of what is to come uh, as St. Jude Parish and St. St. Stephen Parish partner Um, and it's going to be awesome like the this community it's going to be a cool place to be so it already is but it'll be better it's fun so so we do just in, just an FYI. Hopefully, um, all everybody from all three churches are are watching and stuff Mm -hmm. like that but yeah um we do bring the bulletins to um, St. Andrews and yep. to St. Stephen's. Absolutely. So, you know, we get that out there so that way they know what's going on, that we're not, you know, trying to hide mm-hmm. anything from them. We put it out there right away. So. Absolutely. And I guess we'll just wrap it up with just saying as we're approaching um, the official date of merging uh, with St. Andrews and partnering with St. Stephen's, um, we haven't had a lot of opportunity, uh, I think, from us the staff here at St. Jude's just to say, we're so excited to start walking with people, um, to get to meet new people, to, to journey together, to try and reveal Jesus to each other, uh, in new ways We're we're very excited. Um, so it's just, it's, it's something that I am trying to wrap my mind around myself. Um, in the sense that like, the idea of new people is always exciting to me because it's like what like that each person has so much to offer and there are a lot of cool people here at St. Jude Parish already but just knowing that other people are going to be are going to be joining us it just I, I'm super stoked so I just want to take a second right before it happens just to say we're real excited you know like it has been a lot of a lot of craziness over the last 10 years, but we're really pumped. And um, if you need anything, as we say every, whoa, thunder. If you say any, if we've been saying this to to people for the last couple of years, you know, especially um, if you need anything, if you have any questions, if you want to talk, whatever, uh, Sarah and I are always in the office and we would be happy uh, to chat with you. You know, um, when Father Ross is around, I've never seen uh, in the four states of the cat, in the, four states in the United States that I have worked in Catholic parishes. I've never seen a pastor or priest be more willing to be interrupted than Father Ross. I mean, obviously be respectful. You know, he has, you know, things to get done, but I, I mean, I, how he comes out and greets people. It's just fantastic. So it's always fun when he answers the phone. That's (laughs) Father Ross speaking. Can we talk to Father Ross? 
this, this is. is Father <laughs> Ross. Or my favorite is when it's on speakerphone so you can hear and, <laughs> and he'll be like, this is Father Ross. And they're like, oh, oh, uh, uh, oh, <laughs> like, hi. Because like, it's expecting to hear hear me or something. So, all right. Well, know of our prayers for you. Again, we're here for you. And uh, if you need anything, give us a holler. We're excited to see you this weekend. Um, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Peace.